Hi, cool. So we're going to be making uh, palak paneer, a uh, sag paneer today, um, and we're going to be doing it in uh, four different stages. Um, the first stage is uh, probably the easiest one, where uh, I'm going to be making or soaking some cashews uh, to make uh, cashew cream. Um, when you're getting cashews, you probably want the stuff that says uh, that doesn't have salt in it. Does this not have salt in it? Probably, I don't know, but soaking will get rid of the salt anyway. So uh, a bunch of cashews. I might wanna, might wanna eat some as well. Okay, really nice. Um, I've got my kettle already boiled here. So uh, how much water? More than enough to cover the cashews. As you can see. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this to the side. Um, you need to do that for like an hour, maybe two hours. Uh, overnight would be awesome, but I'm lazy, so that's that's what I did. Um, cool. Step two is uh, we're gonna do some really fun stuff with the spinach. Uh, I have a lot of spinach here because I'm making a lot of uh, palak paneer. You don't need to use this much spinach. You can use as much as you want. Uh, it's entirely up to you. The way we're gonna deal with the spinach is really really simple. I'm gonna dump it all into a pot. The hob's not on, don't worry. Uh, I'm not dry cooking a bunch of spinach. Um, I am going to use about one and a half of these bags instead of all of it, because um, I want to use the rest for some other stuff later on in the week. Um, yeah, that's about enough. Uh, what we're gonna do with the spinach is actually really interesting and you need to kind of be prepped a little bit for this. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a whole bunch of boiling water on the spinach for about one minute. And as soon as that minute has passed, we're gonna drain the water and dump the spinach into this ice bath. And um, the reason we're gonna do that is because we don't actually wanna cook the spinach. We just wanna give it like a little bit of what's called a blanche. Uh, I have no idea what that means or why we do that. But what I do know is that it kind of uh, gives the spinach this incredibly amazing green color. Um, once we dump the spinach in that bath uh, and then we drain off the ice water and this sort of spinach cools down, um, we're gonna blitz it up uh, in this thing here. Uh, you don't need to use a blender. You can use uh, like a simple food processor like I have there, or you can just use an immersion blender uh, in, a, in a bowl, entirely up to you. We're also gonna put like some ginger, some garlic, some chili, some salt in there. Uh, so we're going to basically make the paste for this, or the base for this. Uh, and it's going to be the greenest green you've ever seen. Um, so I've got a bunch of water that I've already boiled off in the kettle here, that I'm going to now kind of just go like that. It might not be enough, and that's okay. I'll give it another refill. Probably should have uh, got, got the water in here first and then added the spinach in. Uh, it's okay, it's not a big deal. Notice the hop's not actually on because I don't want to actually boil uh, the spinach here. I just want to, I want to give it a minute to hang out in the hot water, which is clearly not enough hot water. So I will be adding more hot water. Uh, also, this, this recipe is, uh, it's not quick. Uh, but it is very simple. Uh, so, you know, you want to make yourself a drink, like a hot drink or a cold drink. If you're, it, it, I, I would be drinking a beer buzz a bit early in the day. So, spinach is wilting. I might not actually need the water. Uh, Um, it doesn't matter that you're mistreating the spinach a little bit if you bash it up because um, it is going in a blender in a bit. Uh, you could use anything here. You don't have to use the spinach that I used, which is uh, just regular spinach. Uh, you can use baby leaf. You can use the Chinese spinach. You can use 
pretty much anything that's green really you just want the green bits uh, and you want some flavor from the spinach to come through uh, I think that's gonna be plenty hot I don't really need it to be boiling okay now that's covered I give it a bit of a stir and give me a minute I use my oven timer to, to track uh, what's happening around me just because it's it's easy and I don't have to buy another timer uh, or look at my phone uh, with those yeah it's nice uh, so like I said we're gonna do this in four steps this is the second one we've done the first one which is we've soaked the cashews up which again will blitz towards the end to make some cashew cream uh, this is the second bit where we make the paste um, the third bit uh, is uh, where we uh, make pretty much the the base for all of Indian cooking which is uh, onions tomatoes uh, and some ghee uh, slowly cooked um, so the sugars kind of release themselves really nicely and caramelize and the the last step is when the whole thing comes together with a bit of paneer uh, and some seasoning at the end of some garam masala and fenugreek leaves um, which I'll show you um, really easily but uh, for now uh, we'll, we'll, that's my minute uh, and now I'm just gonna set myself up to like drain this so it's not hot again because the hop's not been on this entire time oh that is steamy I wonder if my GoPro steamed up uh, I've never done this before so this is my first time so bear with me if I, if I make mistakes uh, so that one's done again the hob's not really been on so you know it's okay to put it down on a surface that you normally might not put it down on again immediately after the one minute we're gonna dump it into an ice bath and we're gonna we're doing this to like arrest the cooking process right so this will stop whatever the heat was doing whatever the hot water was doing it will stop that to the spinach pretty much immediately so we're gonna reuse that colander should have cleaned up my sink before doing this that's okay so we'll give this a couple of minutes to kind of do its thing uh, while we kind of set this up um, so I've got myself a nutri bullet which is like this is the hot one again you do not need to do this an immersion blender does the job uh, absolutely fine um, I am just gonna quickly skin up some ginger uh, again you can totally use a spoon to do this I am just lazy I do not have the time and do not mind wasting like a little bit of ginger you could totally leave the skin on as well that's not a big deal it's just this ginger has been sat in my fridge for a while and I didn't like the look of the skin so chunk of ginger in there uh, some garlic so I have always have uh, a pot of uh, dried chili uh, hanging around just because I don't actually like the fresh chili very much and I don't really think it's very hot uh, whereas these dry chilies uh, they're really really nice and they smell amazing if you could smell them uh, yeah you, you, you'd be convinced um, I got them from a place called Spice Mountain uh, they used to have a store in Bar Market um, obviously I haven't been to Bar Market in ages um, but they do an online store which you can absolutely uh, use uh, they're really really cool spicemountain.co.uk uh, I buy most of my spices from there um, later on when we season everything with fenugreek you'll see uh, uh, more um, from there um, they're just really nice I'm just going to use a heavier knife because I need to kind of get the skins off a little bit you don't have to be um, perfect about this again you can totally leave the skin on uh, that blender is really good it's gonna blitz everything up really well but I'm just a bit finicky for the skin uh, I don't like the idea of something papery that could be in my food but they are totally edible um, not that you want to eat them um, 
I used to watch this YouTube channel um, where this lady would always put them in and it always threw me off massively. Gee, I wonder how I'm doing. Like I said, this recipe is, is, is simple. Like there's not a lot of um, uh, kind of, you know, mincing or cutting of things and blah, blah, blah. It's just an onion and a couple of tomatoes that you might want to um, cut, but that also we're going to use the food processor for. Um, it's just not quick, that's the trouble. It's just you have to do it in phases. And I promise you, it does kind of give you the most delicious um, palak paneer you've ever had. Also for the paneer, uh, fun fact, you can absolutely make your own paneer. You don't have to, like if you can't buy them, well, let's just not put the skin in there. Um, you don't have to like, if you can't get paneer, oh, I can't have paneer. You can make your own paneer with some really good quality milk. Um, and maybe that's a maybe that's a video we can do for later. But uh, uh, I do get paneer from Ocado and that's where we get most of our groceries. So I just buy some. Um, again, we're just gonna drain that off a bit. Uh, give that the last bit. Give that a nice little shake to get some of the water out. We don't want all of it out. It's fine that it's um, wet because you know it's just easier to blitz up that way. But we do want it sort of dry. Okay. Should have got this. Here. Oh, that's not very good. That's fine. It's my glass of water. It's the cashew. I'm just gonna do it that way. That's just easier. Um, there is a max line on this. I'm really bad at it. Um, I don't think it matters. I don't think it's ever really made a difference, but I've never really blitzed up this much spinach um, before. It might be a problem, but fuck okay, it, we'll see. Uh, I probably shouldn't also swear. Five second rule. Cool. Uh, we're just gonna grab the lid for this bad boy. Are you gonna, are you gonna... Yep. Okay, is that, is that plugged in? Maybe. All right. Actually, wait. We should salt it. Um, always, always season stuff. Uh, you don't have to do it by much. But always a little bit, right? Um, that way your food has seasoning and layers. Uh, it's very, very important. Um, I know loads of people are always up for seasoning at the end, and that is an important thing that you should do. But it is. Also very important to season your food in layers, because it cooks in layers. And that's not plugged in, because the food processor is plugged in. Um, I know what you're thinking, we have two plugs. Why not use the second one? It doesn't work. That is not <laughs> working as it's intended to because now it's too much uh, spinach. So let's just help them out a little bit. Uh, you'll not, not notice this is, your blender is not plugged in, which is very, very important because uh, otherwise <laughs> this could be very dangerous. Uh, so be very careful when you're sticking your knife in a blender. Uh, in that it shouldn't be plugged in. <laughs> um, also, always switch your blender off at the mains.
also mention my blender is really weird. It doesn't have like an on setting. It goes to reprograms, which is why it does the slow and high. No idea how to get it to not do that, but uh, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, we'll give it. So we're always reuse your goddamn utensils. Uh, so we've got. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Is that the best green you've ever seen? So this is our base um, for our ballot veneer. Uh, and we are going to reuse every last bit of it. Um, get yourself some of these silicone. Again, do not, do not stick it in a blender that's on. Uh, yeah, always, always do this in a blade that's not plugged in. Cool. That is our stage two complete. Um, now, in the interest of trying to keep things uh, sane, uh, I'm gonna uh, fast forward and you will uh, see uh, us prep for stage three in a minute. I will see you in exactly a few minutes. And we're back. Cool. So we did do things already. We've done the um, uh, the spinach base, which look at that. I mean, that is green. That is, that is really green. And very, very delicious. Ooh. Um, we've soaked the cashews, which is like around about 30 minutes now. So we're going to leave them soaking right up till the end, which is when we're going to donate in the cashew cream and then um, dress the food with it. We've had a bit of a wash up as well. Um, and we've got everything ready for the next stage. So what's the next stage? Next stage is really simple. We're going to start off with uh, this beautiful pot. Um, you want something with like a really nice heavy base, cast iron. With ceramic is really awesome, but you can use pretty much whatever you have. It doesn't have to be uh, deep like this. You can use like a like a wider, shallow one. It is entirely up to you. There are no rules about this shit. Um, you do need a lid though. The reason you need a lid is because when the paneer goes in, you kind of want it to steam up a little bit so it gets nice and tender. Um, so what what are we going to need uh, for this step? For this step, it's really simple. We need onion. Uh, I have an onion that I'm going to use. Um, why am I using one onion, not two, not three? Um, just because it's an onion. There's no rules about this stuff. Um, I have a bunch of tomatoes. Again, I'm just going to use up this whole box of tomatoes somehow because uh, my wife has a thing for me getting rid of stuff and uh, I think she'll like it if I use up the whole box and not leave like a half a one on one kind of lying around. Um, we've got some paneer. Uh, I'm using uh, about 500 grams. You can use as much as you want, as much as you have entirely up to you. We have some garam masala for the end. Uh, I'm using the stuff that we bought from Morrison's one time in emergency. You can use whatever you have. Um, some bay leaves. Uh, you actually want like the Indian version of these bay leaves. Uh, but again, like I want to get rid of this jar before I buy that. So I'm using these. Um, some cumin seeds. Again, this is from Spice Mountain. You can use whatever cumin seeds you have. These look a bit like this. Um, you get different kinds of cumin seeds. You get ones that are a bit longer as well. You can use those. Cumin is cumin. It's fine. Um, I have a box of spices. Uh, I am going to be using some of these today. I'm going to be using this one, which is turmeric, and this one, which is asafoetida, uh, and maybe a bit of red chili powder as well. Um, you can you, not, you don't have to use asafoetida, asafoetida if you don't have it. It's just nice, tart, like it's a bit like, they call it the MSG of Indian food. It's not MSG. Uh, it comes from a root. It's totally uh, natural and vegan and all that stuff. Um, but it's just nice, it just adds a bit of flavor to the food. So I'm going to be using turmeric, asafoetida, and red chili butter, bay leaves, cumin seeds, garam masala, and oh yeah, and uh, my secret ingredient, fenugreek leaves. Um, so you can absolutely use uh, fenugreek seeds uh, as well, which is what you commonly get, but I like the leaves because they have way more flavor, um, and they just they just smell really, really nice. Um, so yeah, we're uh, uh, and we've got some ghee as well. Um, you can use oil, you can use butter you can use whatever you want you just want some fat in there i'm using ghee just because i like the flavor um cool um the other thing i've got is i've got like a little kind of food processor chopper thing uh, that i'm going to use the reason i'm going to use that is because um like instead of like dicing up the onion 
uh, and the tomato this is just quicker for me and uh, yeah I like quick so I'm just gonna do that um, so I'm first gonna kind of get the onion in there and get it all nice and fine because um, that's the first thing that goes in uh, and you'll see the, these things are like so easy to use uh, you know it's uh, especially for something like Indian food where you don't really care about um, the dice or the slice you know um, in this this particular version which is what I like um, and also which is why I've got my immersion blender out uh, I like my palak paneer really smooth so I actually don't want to taste the kind of texture of the onion uh, or bite you know of it uh, so the smoother it lifts up the you know better uh, I think it's gonna be um, this this kind of chopper thing is a little bit finicky um, I wouldn't buy this one uh, I bought it because I'm a fool um, but, but you want something like this right that, that does this for you especially when you don't care about the texture and again I'm just gonna chop the tomatoes in there as well turn it into a bit of a paste so you see what happens with that right should have turned this on at the beginning because you want this nice and ripping hot but whatever, uh, that'll that'll take a minute. Till then, we'll prep our tomatoes uh, as well. Uh, the reason you want to use, you can absolutely use um, tin tomatoes. There's no reason to use fresh tomatoes. It's not like fresh tomatoes are better for this. Um, the only thing I would recommend that you definitely get is uh, stuff with the skin on because skin has uh, a compound called pectin which is what really kind of thickens up uh, your food it's a gelatinizing um, agent um, the star of the dish here is not the tomato so it doesn't matter if they're fresh or if they're like incredibly flavorful they're just in there to balance out the flavor of the onion and add a bit of water and um, all kinds of fun stuff um, so yeah we're just gonna wait for this to get ripping hot we're gonna put in a couple of, so I'm using quite a lot of ghee, uh, as you can see, because I'm making a lot of food. You don't need to use this much. You can use uh, how much ever you think is appropriate um, for your circumstances. You can absolutely add half ghee, half oil, um, which is what I sometimes do. But again, I'm making a lot of food. Uh, I'm hoping that this will be like a couple of meals um, for me and my wife. Um, uh, so. Um, again, in the latter half of this, uh, I'll be making some white rice as well. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I do that too. Um, I know rice is really simple, but um, I've got a foolproof system that gives me the best rice um, pretty much ever, pretty much all the time. Um, so again, we're just waiting for this to really come out temperature because we're gonna temper our cumin seeds uh, and a couple of bay leaves in this. And we don't want the spices to just kind of swim around in the fat. We want them to really work really quickly um so I'm, i've got it on full whack um uh, and we're just gonna give it like a minute or two um which is why it's always good to get yourself a drink when you're cooking you know make, make, make a beer make a coffee do your thing it's uh it's sunday yeah whatever there is a different version of this dish which is uh without the spinach uh where the base is now ghee and it's butter and the star of the dish is the tomatoes like when it's tomato season and you use fresh tomatoes to do that that's when you get um, what we call paneer butter masala or paneer makhanwala or butter paneer um, and um, again the star of that dish there is the tomatoes and the fenugreek leaves you really need good fresh um, fenugreek leaves um, this this brand spice one they're a little bit expensive um, but they do um, some very very nice stuff um, all all my spices tend to be from them because they I don't know how they source their spices but it, it, it really is um, as close to the real thing as you can possibly get so I can I can hear a bunch of things now um, in my ghee I can s s no there are no bubbles I was gonna say I saw some bubbles but that would have been a lie a um, really easy way to test how good your oil is is take a little bit of the thing that you're gonna temper in it and just pop it in and see what happens you can see a bunch of small bubbles started so that's good to go um, so I am going to go in with like a full teaspoon of this stuff um, you don't need a full teaspoon I just love the stuff so I'm going in with quite a bit 
And again, for bay leaves, you don't need many. Uh, just one or two should do the trick. Uh, give it a nice kind of get to know each other well. Uh, you don't need to do this for a while because again um, the, the spices will burn. Uh, um, you know, 10 or 20 seconds is more than enough. You want to go in with the onions. Um, when you when you get the onions in there, the temperature will come down, so you don't be tempted to kind of get the flame lower. Second, whenever you cook onions, always season it a little bit because um, it, it helps the onions cook a little bit quicker. Um, when the onions are in there for like a couple of seconds, then turn the flame low. Because again, you do not want to burn. I mean, even if you do burn them, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, it's totally fine. So we're gonna prep our tomatoes while the onions are doing their thing. So again, same principle. I'm just gonna chuck them in here. So that bit, bit of salt you saw me put in the onions, that's going to be the last time I salt this food right up till the end now. Um, I would be very tempted to salt it when the tomatoes go in, but you don't want to do that because the food will reduce and if you salt it before, if you salt it before you add a bunch of water and then you reduce that water, it's just gonna get really salty because the salt's not got anywhere to go. Um, whereas if you put the thing with the water in there and then reduce it, then you can taste it and salt it like how you see fit. Uh, always an important thing. Again, I'm just stirring these around so they don't stick, but if they do stick, it's not a big deal. It's actually a good thing because that's proper flavor. Um, that's what the French call the fond. I'm just going to turn the light on um, and I'm going to turn, no, I'm not going to uh, Again, I'm only cooking this till I see a bit of colour. Um, uh, this is going to be the last time that we need uh, any kind of chopping or food processing. So I am going to soak this in my washing up bowl. So what, what's going to happen next is, whilst I wait for the onions to get like a bit of colour, the tomatoes will go in uh, and then I'm going to turn the flame down once the tomatoes get up to temperature and slow cook the tomatoes till they uh, do this thing where the fat and the water will separate, which is really, really cool. Um, but while I'm slow cooking them, I'll be adding the turmeric and the asafoetida and a bit of red chili powder because those those spices cook really well in fat um, which is what this is currently quite rich in um, so I'm going to cook I'm going to slow cook that quite a lot for quite a lot of time so I will pause um, again and again this is phase three of the whole thing uh, the last phase is where sort of the whole thing will come together um, which is pretty quick um, this is the slowest part of the entire thing is cooking the onions uh, and the tomatoes. So as you can see, the onions are now starting to stick a little bit. Uh, they're starting to get a bit of color on, which is good because that is time. So I'm going to turn the flame back up again because cold thing, hot pan. Um, uh, as you can see, the tomatoes are quite watery and that is to be expected of them. Um, so this flame is high which is very important because again I need for the tomatoes to come up to temperature clean out the sides but, so how much turmeric uh, entirely up to you I, as I said before I'm cooking a lot 
So I'm going to go for whatever this looks like, which is I think about a third of a teaspoon. Um, that stuff, the stuff I bought is really strong, so I don't need very much of it. Uh, very little acetate because you don't need too much of it. It's uh, quite strong in flavor uh, and a little bit of red chili powder again because um, we like spicy food. Again, that stuff is really strong, so I'm not going to use too much of it. Um, just going to give this a bit of a stir. Okay, now this is going to take a lot of time. So I'm going to turn the flame down. Uh, I'm going to give you a look at the clock, which is 12.01. Uh, and I'm going to pause and come back uh, um, when this is about ready. Cheers. Go. Hi, we're back. So it's now... 12, 16, so we've been going for about a good 15 minutes, and this is what this looks like. So as you can see, there's very little water left, and there's like speckles of fat starting to come out when you're gonna do this, you know, like these trails. This is basically where you want it to be, right? Um, so if you added like a little bit of ginger, maybe some garlic, maybe a chili or two, this is basically the base for most Indian cooking. This would form your base for like a, um, chicken tikka masala, butter chicken, pretty much whatever you want it. Now, we, what we're gonna do next to this, as you can see, uh, we're still in the middle of phase three. Um, I've had a bit of a clear up, I've got rid of some stuff that I don't need. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add uh, our beautiful spinach paste, that's a lovely, beautiful green, um, into this. Uh, I'm gonna add some garam masala, then I'm gonna add some water, and I'm gonna really let that reduce a little bit and then give it a bit of taste for seasoning. And then that's when the paneer goes in and that's basically it. Um, what I'm also going to do in the meantime is I'm going to make our rice. Um, I've got this beautiful pan ready, so you, you just need like a really simple pan and a lid um, for rice. Uh, I am making uh, lunch for me and my wife, that's two people, um, which for us turns out to be about a cup of rice. Um, dry, um, that one over there. Um, and that's what we'll be using, we'll be using basmati rice with a little, with little flicks of like red um, wild rice that we use. Um, just because it's really nice on your gut. Which is called for it makes your poop nice. Um. Anyway, here we go. So that beautiful green paste is in there. We'll give that a bit of a stir in a second. Just want to get as much of it out as I possibly can, just because it looks so beautiful and it tastes really good. Uh, I had a bit of a taste. There's nothing in there that you wouldn't want to eat anyway. Um. Another bag of spinach said raw, unwashed. Uh, Spinach or something. I should have washed it, but I didn't. Whatever, it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give that a bit of a stir. As you can see, that's gonna look beautiful. So what I'm gonna do, as well as before the paneer goes in, and this is why I've got my margin blender. I'm gonna give it another whiz, um, just because, as you can see, like the onion and tomato is still quite bitty, and I don't want that. I want it to be as smooth as possible. Now you really don't need to do that. I'm just doing that. I may not even actually do that, because this actually looks and smells amazing, um, just as is. So as you can see, it's really thick, and I don't really want that. This still has like a bit of cooking to do, so I am gonna uh, kind of uh, give it a bit of water. Um, now, I am gonna use kettle water though. Uh, this has already been boiled while we, were, while we had the pause there. Um, made my wife a cup of tea, so... Um, Always, like, if you're gonna add water to your cooking or whatever, just, I mean, just use hot water. Um, because you can use cold, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just, it takes that much longer for everything to come back up to temperature and everything, and it's kind of, you know, we're doing all these things to save time, right? Why not do it properly? Cool, so we've got, that is now on a super low flame, uh, just because I'm gonna give that time to look like, now, there is no right or wrong. This is perfect as it is. As soon as the stump comes out of temperature, you can dump the paneer in, uh, season it to taste, and that's it. That's your that's your lunch ready. Um, I like it a little, like this is actually the perfect consistency. So what I might do is I might add a little bit more water just because I want it to come down to the perfect consistency. I want it to warm up and cook a little bit and it, water is going to evaporate um, in that time. So now it's a bit runny and it's gonna pull down a little bit, which is perfect and awesome. In that time, we're gonna make some rice. Um, making rice is super, super simple, and loads of people threw it up, and it's really weird uh, that people do. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I make rice. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this. 
Rice is rice. If it's cooked and you can eat it, that's good enough. Uh, but this is how I do mine. Uh, so about a level cup with the rice. This is how much rice we tend to eat um, in one sitting for two people. Uh, you can make how much up you want. That's just a cup measure, by the way. That yeah, there you go. It says one cup stainless china, or whatever the hell. Um, so you always wash your rice. The reason you wash your rice is you want to get the starch of it. Um, how do you know your rice is washed? You don't. Is never ultimately washed all the way. Uh, plus, you know the stuff is actually good for you uh, to a certain degree. It is basically undigestible, um, but some of it's good for you. Um, I tend to do this exact thing where, like, I'll fill it up with a bunch of water and then I'll, uh, you know, just run my fingers through it like that. Um, I'll do this, like, till till I can see the water cloud up, and then you just get rid of the water. Uh, and you do it gently at an angle, so you don't need a sieve or a strainer or anything. And uh, according to my mum, the correct number of times to do this is four. So that's how many times I do it, four. Um, most of what I know about food comes from her. So I just do what she says, because she makes amazing food. Um, again, like I'll just run my fingers through it. Wait till the water gets cloudy. So that's, this is the second time around. Water's getting cloudier, cloudier, which is awesome. And then... You might lose like a fleck or two of rice and that's okay. Um, the reason I'm doing the rice uh, ahead of time is because it's absolutely fine to make your rice ahead of time. What's not fine is like to have a hungry wife it's like, where's my food? And then you gotta make the rice, and then that's not, that doesn't work. Um, it's better, because um, the rice is gonna take, it uh, It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to make uh, to make rice properly, but you can absolutely just leave the lid on and have it, you know, sit in its own steam, and that's absolutely fine. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, this is number three. So as you can see, the water takes longer and longer to get cloudier, which is, Maybe untrue, but whatever. Like four times is four times. Like I said, you don't want to wash it like completely. You want some of that starch. You just don't want all of it. Also, uh, in this rice, like the red stuff in here, that's really, really starchy. Um, and that's partly what's contributing to, to so much starch over here. Um, your white rice might not do the same thing. Um, we used to do a thing before where we did brown rice in that rice. And that just took ages. Like it took about eight washes. Um, to get to the point where it was decent. Um, also, you can totally use a rice cooker. Those things are amazing. Um, they're they're very very simple to use, uh, and you can't screw it up. But you still have to wash your rice. You always have to wash your rice. There's in, and your lentils as well. If you're ever cooking lentils, like dry lentils, always do this. Um, lentils take a lot longer because they're a lot starchier, uh, and they have like more crap in them. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just where I buy my lentils, you know. Maybe I should just buy better lentils, I guess. But, hey ho. Cool, so that's number four. Um, now, this is where it starts to get a bit tricky, right? Turn your tap on. Okay, fill up the rice a little bit, and then stick your finger in there, and then when it gets up to the first kind of mark, just about there, stop. So that's what, that much water above the level of rice. Just works every time. Um, there's a guy who ran like an experiment on it uh, to like check whether that was the best way of making rice or not. And he proved that it was. Um, also the other thing I like to do is in my rice, I like to add like a, a bit of ghee. Um, it's supposed to keep the grain separate, but there's, I've done it without and it's fine. It's just in my head this tastes better uh, and you want a bit of salt as well because um, again you want your rice to kind of taste good on its own so if you had like a, a bite of rice by itself it would still taste pretty good okay so I am going to set this up a little bit no that's a bit wonky also don't do that yeah yeah that's fine okay um, I'm using the lowest flame I have on the highest setting because just like I have a system for how I make rice and that's my system. Uh, don't, 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 don't question me. Um, 
So this this is coming up to temperature again. I'm just gonna scrape down. Oh, it smells so good. Uh, I'm gonna scrape the sides down. Uh, I'm gonna give it a bit of flame just because I want to see it bubble so it reduces a little bit quicker. Um, it's starting to look really silky as well, which is awesome. Um, once this comes up to temperature and starts coming down, I'm gonna taste it. Uh, I'm gonna put some garam masala in. Um, whilst all that is happening, I don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of it, put it over here. Um, I am gonna make the cashew cream. Uh, so we had soaked these cashews like in the beginning of our kind of thing. So I'm gonna get rid of this water again, just, just because it probably has a bunch of salt in it. If those were salted, no, not saying they were, but whatever. Um, put them into the thing that you're gonna to use to blend. Um, just dump like a little bit of water. That's about 100 mil. I'm gonna put a little bit more just because I don't want my cream too thick. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Like you can always add more water to make your cream runnier, um, but you can't take water out, so be careful. And I need this. In that vein, I'm just gonna take a little bit down. Yeah, yeah. Smart guy. Yeah. Add, add water, but not take it out. I should listen to myself. Okay. That goes in. Again, my blender is weird. It does this thing where it doesn't have a program. And that's way too watery for what I wanted it to do. But it's fine, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's still just gonna go on like a little thing and then I'm gonna use it for my smoothies and stuff later, so it's okay. Um, this is starting to bubble up quite nicely and to be honest, I don't think I need to blend it because even though it's a, it is bitty, it's still about as silky smooth as I want it to be, which is really cool. Um, so I'm gonna add my garam masala in here now. Um, you can add as much, as much as you like, as long as it's like a bit. I'm adding about more than, again, like, like I said, this is about two meals for the two of us. So I know that's a lot, but uh, it's gonna be good. Um, also, it's fine, it's not a big deal. You like spicy food. Um, this is gonna go here because I'm gonna need it later for the paneer. Um, and now for the, uh, so I'm gonna taste that in a second for seasoning before I put the paneer in, but I'm gonna give it a minute to bubble away. Come on. Yeah, that's better. Oh, so you could totally use, use, use a pair of scissors. You don't, you don't need to use a knife like that. There's no reason to do that. Um, I'm just lazy. So paneer is basically just cottage cheese. It's, it's, um, it's just really simple cheese. Um, there's nothing to it. So you want bite-sized chunks, so I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna cut that in half, and then cut that in half, and then cut the other bit in half. And then I'm just gonna cut that in half. And then 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 cut that bit in half. And these two need one cut as well. And that's bite size one chunk of paneer done. Second one, same principle. You just keep going halves till you get to a point where you're like, I could eat that in one bite.
So these do not take very long to cook. So if they're not the same size, you don't need to hassle yourself about it. These cook up really quickly. We're talking like a couple of minutes. And that's it. So now we're going to turn this down a bit just because it's hot. And I don't want to put hot stuff in my mouth. So I'm pretty sure this is going to need at least a little bit of salt, but we're going to try it. Oh, the flavor of that spinach. It's got a nice kick to it. You can taste the ginger as well. It's really nice, but it definitely needs some seasoning. Okay, that's about, say like, a heap teaspoon of salt. Um, there are bits in this, however, which I am not okay with because I want it all to be one thing. So I might give it a bit of a blitz um, in a second. Okay. Um, so that, that, wait for the rice to come up to the boil. Once it comes up to the boil, and um, turn the gas uh, low, uh, or, or like in this case, to the middle, because uh, it's a pretty small flame anyway. Um, wait till the water disappears underneath the rice. Once the water disappears underneath the rice, um, put the lid on, uh, turn the gas all the way low, uh, and then give that a couple of minutes and you're good to go. Um, so that's doing its thing. That's seasoned now. I have to taste it again. This is a different spoon, by the way. This is the spoon that I used um, for the masalas. My, the spoon that I used before is on there. I'm not a double dipper. That's amazing. Okay, I'm just gonna waz that up. Now, this part is optional. You really do not need to do this. I am doing this just because I, I like creating washing up for myself, I guess. Oh, that's really nice. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go on. Ooh, that is hot. That is hot. So as you can see, as it hits the chunks, it's gonna make like a little bit of noise, and that's cool. So as you can see, that's like way thicker than uh, when we first started. That's why I like wazzing things up. It's pretty cool. That's that wazzed. Uh, I'm just gonna turn the sides down a bit. And this is not on a very high flame because this is basically done. This is cooked now, right? Your gravy's done. Uh, I'm gonna just chuck in my paneer. And the last bit of seasoning for this, which is the fenugreek. Um, leaves. They're so good. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. Uh, they here. Yeah. So again, I'm making quite a bit, so I'm gonna chuck in quite a bit. Um, there. From a plant in India called methi, uh, they just have like a really nice savory flavor to them. Um, they're so so good. Just as a kind of final shot in the food, right? So this is now done. I am gonna put a lid on it, as I said before, just for the paneer to nicely kind of steam up uh, in its thing. Uh, and that rice is coming up to a boil, which is really, really cool and very important. Uh, as that kind of rice comes up, I should put that on a bigger flame, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, cool, 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 cool. 
Um, yeah, so that rice is going to come up to the boil. Uh, I am going to give that sort of, this is going to need another five minutes. That's going to need another ten, another five, ten minutes. And uh, I think we can uh, take a bit of a break and come back. See you in a minute. Welcome back. So we have done a little bit of washing up really quickly. We have taken the cashew cream out into a little jar and it actually looks really good. Um, and now as you can see the rice is sort of, uh, the water from the rice has come to level with the actual level of the rice. Uh, so we're just gonna turn this bad boy down a notch. And again, the only reason we're doing that is not to slow the cooking down. We just don't want it to get to the point where we don't want things to get to a point where the rice will burn. Uh, and it's really that simple. Um, now, once that gets to a point where um, the uh, water dis starts disappearing altogether, um, it looks like there's no more water left, we're going to switch the gas off and put the lid on and give that sort of five minutes and whatever little bit of water is remaining, the rice is just going to soak all of that in. Uh, and it's going to be delicious and it's going to be the perfect bowl of fluffy white rice you've ever had. Um, and while that is happening, this is uh, also doing its thing. Um, we're gonna have a peek inside and check that the paneer has started to get a bit tender. Um, it, once, the, once it looks like the paneer has started to tenderize it a little bit, um, we're literally just gonna switch this off uh, and let it sort of cook in its own steam. Um, this is not a pressure cooker. Um, that is not uh, a thing that is, should be happening. I don't know why that's happening, but I didn't know it did that, so there you go. Um, this is looking very nice. Um, that paneer, yeah, look at that. See how it's like, yeah, that's cooked, that's done. So we're good to basically turn that off. And that is my sock paneer is ready over there. Um, as I said, we're gonna give that uh, a minute. Again, I'm not turning it up, I was going to, I was very tempted to, but I'm not gonna. Um, we're gonna give that a minute. So as you can see, there's like a little clump of starch there. Could have washed that off, it'll be fine. Uh, nobody's gonna die. Uh, so you can, once all these bubbles disappear and it looks like there's no water left, I'm just gonna put the lid on and leave it. Uh, and that's 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 our rice. Uh, don't need this anymore. I'm gonna have like a lovely little clean now once all this is done. Um, and uh, that's done. I'm gonna put this away that way. And it's gonna get, get put away as well. So you can see the grains curling up. That's that's almost there. Um, you can overcook rice, but you can overboil rice. You can over steam rice. So once that water disappears and you put that lid on and you switch the gas off, that's good for like a good half hour to one hour. You can just leave that like that, and that's fine. Um, so it, usually this is done sort of halfway through this. I'm just not good at doing multiple things at once. Uh, I'm good at doing maybe one thing at once, maybe. Uh, but this this is one of my favorite things to make. Um, this is one of my wife's favorite things to have. Uh, the spinach tastes really good, and it gives us a sense of eating something healthy, even though there's like there is a so there, there is a bit of fat, fat in there. Um, I wouldn't say it's high in salt. Uh, the paneer does have some salt, and I did season the food quite decently. Um, so I would say it's moderate in salt. Uh, but I mean I like ghee I think it's a good fat I don't think it's a bad fat to have paneer is good dairy it's not bad so as you can see now the water is basically disappeared right so you can still hear the bubbles going I hope you can hear that um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the gas off and I'm going to put a lid on this and I'm going to come back to it in 10 minutes and you, you'll you see um, the, the most sort of like this is basically cooked. Um, but the grain will curl up even more in the steam and it, it just leads to the most fluffiest bowl of rice you've ever seen. And you can see those little pockets um, that the, the, the food is taken, or the, the water is taken to sort of come out a little bit. So this is the perfect amount of water to cook, the perfect amount of rice. You won't need to drain anything, you won't need to sieve anything. It's just done. Um, so I'm going to turn the flame up a little bit till I hear the... Yeah, so that's done. 
and we're gonna give that 10 minutes so it's 12.43 we'll come back in 10 minutes and see what that looks like bye ready hi welcome back um so it's been it's not 12.55 it's been a little bit more than those 10 minutes but like i said it's totally fine in this team um this rice is done this palak paneer is done i've had a bit of a clean down and i'm getting ready to serve how am i going to serve i've got these two kind of beautiful bowls i'm um, ready and i've got um a little uh, smaller bowl to get the rice ready right so look at that see how i told you the the grains would call up that is the sign of perfectly cooked rice when the grains are all called up uh, and this rice is incredibly incredibly fluffy so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to dish up the rice then i'm going to put a bit of curry around it and then i'm going to dress it with um the spinach so you remember how i told you there would be no water left look at that there's no water left um how did i know that didn't check it it's just that's just that amount of rice and that amount of water is just perfect every single time um like i said me and my wife eat about half of this much um every time we eat that's how i know to make a cup full of rice there might be some left over but that's okay uh, so what i do is flat pack a smaller bowl of rice cover it with a bigger bowl turn it around give it a bit of a knock and it comes out perfect this is how my mom used to serve food on a sunday um just because she's cool and fancy um, so that's how i learned how to do it Flap back as much rice as I can in a little chunk. Okay, there we go. Do a better job of flat backing things. Here. Same principle. Give it a bit of a tap. There you go. That's your uh, rice soap done. And now for the grand. Uh, usually, if you make just enough for two people, you could just put the cashew cream on here and serve it like that. But I, I made way too much because I wanted for lunch. To cool. So we had a few technical difficulties, unfortunately, which is uh, my way of saying that my GoPro's battery died. Um, so we're back to dishing up again because uh, I'm having dinner. Um, and basically, we've got the same sort of bowl of rice again, which is... I forgot. Oh, that's hot. Uh, and we've got some uh, of the beautiful sake to dish around um, um, the bowl as before. So we've got a nice little mod happening again. And this time it's a little bit more controlled as well, which is kind of nice. cashew cream that we'd made from before which we're basically gonna just take and kind of just go yeah, give it a nice little drizzle um, and, and that's it that's uh, our little sagbner um, adventure and thank you for uh, watching with me cheers bye